Hello Fearfunks and welcome in Feardemic's apartment. My name is Lucas, yes I have pink uh, headphones because, well, why not? But that's enough about me, I have a living legend with me here today in my virtual studio. Musician, composer, responsible for tracks to games like Dusk, Nightmare Reaper or freaking Doom Eternal The Ancient Gods. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Andrew Hulshut. Hi Andrew, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm super excited to speak with you about you. I hope you will take us on a journey behind the scenes of your work. So let me start from the very, very beginning. How did you join the game dev industry? It was your dream that you want to compose to games or you were a musician and it just kind of happened? The second, actually. Um, it like This wasn't a thing that was on my radar until one day I just saw a gentleman remaking basically Duke Nukem 3D and Unreal Engine 3 UDK at the time. And I was like, that's kind of cool. I wonder if I could maybe like like help them make like some music or something like that. You know, like that'd be, that might be neat. And it just mm-hmm. spawned from there. Like uh, eventually that, that project didn't work out, but Apogee got a hold of us and was like, hey, would you guys be interested in doing Rise of the Triad? And I'm like, what is happening right now? You know, like... <laughs> It was it was it was real strange and yeah I just kind of fell into it but like I think I know what I'm doing <laughs> isn't that every professional? <laughs> it's crazy. It just happened and I understand that after that you uh, everybody wanted you to their projects yeah or you were or after that you were looking for projects in gaming. Um, like after after Rise of the Triad it was uh, I'm just making sure that everything's cool here after after Rise of the Triad. Um, it was more, uh, like I was just kind of working with, with one group, which was called Interceptor Entertainment back in the day. It was just a handful of, of modders, basically. Like we'd, we'd all, mm-hmm. like a bunch of these guys had been on the mod scene for a long time. We kind of were just kind of figuring out our way about, okay, cool. We shipped Rise of the Triad. I guess we did something right. We shipped a game, right? And then after that, I think was whenever, um, some money kind of came into play for like the studio and all that good stuff. Really, I think that's that's where some some issues came in because I th- I think the mm-hmm. scope of things got a little out of hand. Uh, things got restructured after that. Uh, we shipped Bombshell, which was like not the greatest. <laughs> <laughs> you can't always be batting a thousand. Um, we shipped Red Rogers after that, which was okay. That was uh, you know like the, there was some more time. I think that would have been that would have been a better project. That was supposed to be like kind of an in between, uh, two mm-hmm. different things. But really. Whenever uh, we kind of got told most of the the lead contractors if they if they didn't leave, or we got told, hey, we we can't pay you anymore. Mm. Like for me, that was really when the door opened for me. Like I didn't I didn't really understand how many people wanted to work with me until right around dusk. It was like right then because as soon as that door closed a million others opened and I was like, whoa, mm. I had no idea that this was a thing. So like, that's, that's really when things kind of started kicking up into gear for me with that. Cause you had dusk yet. I mean, dusk was like, you know, I'd known Dave forever in a medieval. I, I, that's who I just got done working those games with Leon. Also, oh, he was your friend before that. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, Leon and Simon were leads on, on those two games. Yeah. They just, they really wanted to, to make their own designs and, and go kind of their own way. And they really wanted me to come with them. But uh, like uh, <clears throat> Nightmare Reaper was um, Bruno reaching out to me just because he really liked the Rise of the Triad stuff. And I would have never known that because it looked like I was insulated with like 3D realms at the time. So nobody would approach me. And like, I was like, oh shit, like this is, this is hurting me. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, like, so yeah, he, that was, I think one of the things that he mentioned is like, I figured you just worked straight for the company. I figured there was no way I was like, oh shit. You know, <laughs> okay. And then it was just more and more developers after that, I guess, after they saw that I wasn't working on, on, uh, on 3D art stuff anymore. Mm-hmm. So yeah. you're a very lucky guy because, uh, oh, sorry that I interrupted you, but I just noticed that you're very lucky because so many composers cannot find the job in the game industry and it's like everybody's fighting for you. So it's, it's amazing. Every time I, uh, there's a, there's a handful of people that I try my best to kind of make sure that if, if, if I don't have the time these days, mm-hmm. which, which like, you know, I'm just, I'm one person. If I don't have the time to work on something and I think it's a cool project, but I just, I just can't like, like 
I'm sorry, you know, there's other stuff going on and I, I want to give you my undivided attention, but I can't. It's one, if it's one of those situations, I try to pick from about like five different other musicians that I know that I'm like, hey, which one of you, which one of these guys would be a best fit for this? Like in my own head. And then I'll just, I'll make an introduction and I'll, I'll, oh, I'll, cool. I'll try and like, yeah, like, I, I mean, I know what that feels like. I, I know that like <laughs> how hard it is. You're just, you're clawing and trying to, to make sure that, you know, I just want to get my music out in there. I just want to get heard. I totally know what that's all about. And like, I just want to give back a little bit when I can, you know what I mean? Like that, that can be super stressful for musicians and it can also be super degrading. And I don't want either one of those to be anything that for that somebody that I know that I work with, you know, I have a working relationship with, I don't want them to feel like, feel like that at any given point. So if I can give to them at any given point from something that I'm like, I can't do this. I really want to, but I can't. Yeah. That's, I, I love to try and give back with that. It always feels uh, weird for me though. <laughs> That's very cool, man. Very cool. So, uh, sorry if I will repeat myself, but Doom Eternal, Dusk, Nightmare Reaper, these are impressive titles you had a chance to work on. You made a very heavy and dynamic soundtrack to each of them, pretty much. So, tell me, how did it happen that you, you know, kind of specialized in music to shooters? The dynamic side of it is kind of... You just think of it in terms of like an ambient and an action track for most of these games with stuff like Dusk and a Medieval. And like with Doom Eternal, it became something completely different, like way, way over the top in scope with that. But I think um, I really just fell into this because, I mean, I love games like Doom and I love games like Blood and Quake and, and, and that kind of stuff. And I think what you know is what you'll gravitate towards. Like... I really like playing other games. Some one, some of my favorite ones to sit down and just chill to. I love playing City Skylines. Like, just, yeah, <laughs> you just chill out and and that's one of my favorites. But what I'm good at and what I know is that genre, like shooters. I know what that's. I know what that tension is supposed to feel like. I know what the the strings that I'm supposed to be invoking out of people. And that sounds silly. Whenever you're just like, yeah, I'm trying to pull strings on people on a shooter game. It's like, no, you you, you can't. Like, like <laughs> it's possible. It's not just like mindless, you know, run and gun. Like you, there, you can totally do that. But you have to find your moments to do that. I feel like where I'm at in terms of like how I specialize for music and shooters now is mm -hmm. yeah I can sit here and I could I could write you like a soundtrack that's got a bunch of different music on it hey this has 40 50 songs sure we got a two-year development cycle let's go or we could sit down and we can cut this down to like 20 but they could be mm -hmm. 20 ones that I feel really really solid about really good about and I know that these are going to invoke certain feelings from people that was really, that was what Dusk was to start with. And after we shipped Dusk and I saw how much, how, how successful that was. I mean, like mm -hmm. I say successful, it's successful by like a, like an indie's definition. Well, successful. <laughs> it was successful. Yeah, yeah, Let's yeah. not be a modest here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But whenever I saw how successful that was and how successful it continues to be and like the reaction from it, uh, people understood what I was trying to convey with that music. And mm -hmm. it felt like, it felt like a pretty big risk honestly coming out of it because I was like man are people going to understand that these guitars that sound like dog shit are supposed to be emulating like Nine Inch Nails from the 90s like their guitar tone and like just like that really aggressive kind of in your face industrial texture that's being pushed forward is this just going to miss and like it fucking didn't like, <laughs> like mm -hmm. I was like thank god you know <laughs> but um, yeah making those choices is really what I'm I'm all about these days. And I think it comes more to writing. Like yeah, you can sit down and you can you can make something sound badass, right? I think anybody can make something sound fucking badass. You can you can become a great engineer and like make something sound amazing, huge gigantic bass hits, big wide stereo synths. I think everybody can do that. I think what it really comes down to is your writing. That's where you're just pulling shit out of outer space. And that's, I think, what interests me the most as time goes on is the writing. Like, no, production doesn't take a backseat, but it does come second to writing for me. 
that's, that's how, how you, I that, that's how I write music for shooters now, and that's kind of how I dropped into it. I was just that's just what I played for the most. It's very cool that you're taking it from your own experience. It's like uh, like you said, you were playing a shit tons of shooters, and you just kind of thanks to it, thanks to it that you are a gamer, you are playing those games. You know what, like you said, what what strings to pull to kind of to give people this adrenaline playing it. I yeah. guess that you're also, you are a fan of hard rock metal music as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hard to guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, that's like the whole, like the whole rock and metal kind of stuff. Like, yeah, I love doing that stuff, but it's, that's also not the only dimension to a lot of this. You know what I mean? Like there's, there's, there's a lot of multi-dimensional stuff as we move on. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. I am dude that has the eight string guitar and the seven string guitar <laughs> behind me, you know, and a whole collection of them over here. But also, um, man, I think one of my favorite things these days is programming like really just aggressive sounding uh, synth tracks and seeing mm -hmm. where I can take that. And also seeing where I can take things like sound design, like taking guitar and putting it in areas where it really doesn't belong and seeing what happens there. I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's it's weird, but it's fun. <laughs> like no, if, really it work, if it that. works, if it works, and everybody wants to hear, listen to your music, and everybody wants to hire you, then I think you're doing something. Yeah, I think uh, it right. works, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, <laughs> man. It's uh, the the Nightmare Reaper soundtrack was my Spotify number one playlist for like a few days. I was just riding to my work, and I was listening to <laughs> to it. It's amazing right. job, really. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that's uh, gosh, that was. That's another one that felt like a risk because like the entire time, like, and it's weird that it felt like a risk because the entire time it felt like I'm just writing like almost like a solo record. Like this is what it would sound like if I wasn't working in games. Oh, like it's almost that. It's not completely that, but it's almost there where I just feel like it's like, oh, you're writing a metal record that just has some texture stuff to it. And, you know, just wearing some of your inspirations like Devil Driver on your sleeve. Mm. And, uh... Yeah, I just remember handing that over to Bruno and be like, I hope this this works. And like, I get the comments all the time on that. And I'm like, cool, right on. I'm glad you like it. Like, it just didn't feel like the typical video game soundtrack. I feel like for the most part, it feels like an album that's playing. And music album. I, yeah, it, it sounds like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, very, it's very unique. But of course, we all love Dusk. We all love Night of the Reaper and all the projects we were working on. But I just have to dig in one topic is the about doom eternal so uh, i need to ask you how did you join the team uh, who was working on the soundtrack to the doom eternal dlc the ancient gods if, if i remember the title correctly did they find you or did you find them and of course the most important question was the work with such a big brand looks like because i guess you cannot do anything you want um So Doom Eternal is a, well, let me start that over. <laughs> sure, sure. So, <laughs> so I, I mean, that was a great answer. I asked you the question and so, yeah, oh man, that's amazing. You can, you can leave that in. That's fine. I will. Come I will. Back. Trust yeah, me. Yeah. <laughs> so, so. Go on, go on. <laughs> so, like, I'd been friends with uh, the guys from id since, like, 2015. Like, they, mm -hmm. they saw that I was working on something called IDKFA, which was like a remake of um, all of Doom 1 soundtrack. And I put mm. that out and like the Doom community went ape shit over it, which, you know, thank you, Doom community. <laughs> um, <laughs> they're amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're great. But the, like they went, they went crazy over it and they still do to this day. Like it's still like, there's that has so many numbers on it. But basically, like, the guys that did pass that whole thing around, they were like, have you fucking heard this? Like, they, I, I heard about this after the fact. They got passed around the office a bunch where, like, this is fucking dope. You know, like, they, they, they'd they have that on while they were working on LD for Doom 2016. And I was like, holy shit, that's crazy. And, <laughs> yeah, um, I found out that I was living, like, I don't know, five or ten minutes away from a couple, a couple dudes. Uh, one being Mark Diaz, who was uh, a programmer for them at the time and the other being Jason O'Connell uh, which Mark Diaz went over to work on the uh, I think he's a lead on Insomniac now and Jason O'Connell was a lead level designer for it at the time as well which now he is producer for uh, Sabre who works you know side by side with Tim Willits every day and Todd Holland's head 
and like these two guys it's my people like like we just they were like hey you want to you want to come hang out and i was like yeah of course i want to come hang out so we went to uh this beer garden that was close to us and just Mm -hmm. sat down and talked and the more i talked i was like yeah these this is these are definitely people that like i would be friends with if there wasn't even doom involved in any of this and we've just stayed friends ever since but like they really i think started kind of maybe pushing a little bit here and there Mm -hmm. and an area about like hey you know what about this guy what about this guy what about this guy and then I met Chad Mossholder years before any of this, like in like 2017 or something like that. We got along really well just talking audio and I felt like I was just learning, just talking to the guy. Him and Chris Height, who Chris Height worked on Doom 2016 as well. Chris Height mm-hmm. formerly, I think, worked at Sony or went to work at Sony after Doom. Brilliant sound designer, like just mm-hmm. really, really good guy. And both of those guys, whenever we talked, I, I first talked to, actually, I first talked to them, if I remember correctly, at the launch of Doom 2016 at a GameStop, because I saw that they were all going to be there. I was like, oh yeah, I want to go meet these guys. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. We had a long conversation that night about how they worked with the audio and everything. I was like, wow, I actually feel like I learned something here. This is cool. Well, stayed in contact with these guys like over the time and like conventions go by and like we'll hang out, have a couple of beers at the conventions, that kind of stuff. Just just doing the the normal rounds of things. And they see my work and they reach out. They're like, hey, you know, congratulations with Dust. Congratulations with the medieval 2020 rolls around and like, you know, all the the stuff that they had with with Mick and like the uh, the the pandemic and it's just like it seemed like just a firestorm of everything that could possibly go sideways was going sideways for everybody. They reached out to me that year, said, "Hey, would you be interested in 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 working on some some DLC for this game?" And I was like, "Yeah, of course. Um, you know, let's let's see what we can we can make happen." And I was expecting you will you will say that I, you were like yeah yeah I want to do it but you were like yeah okay that's cool the, well, yeah, very like, cold no, guy <laughs> no no I I was I was like that I'm downplaying it like I was like oh, I was like oh fuck you know like oh my god I kind of saw it coming a little bit mm-hmm. just a little bit okay. so I, I wasn't I wasn't incredibly surprised you know how like sometimes the universe throws you shit where you're like I wanted this for so long and I couldn't have it for so long and now it's here. And now you're like, yeah, I kind of saw it, but it just, mm-hmm. you think I, but see, I, yeah. I knew it would happen. Yeah. I, I understand this with that feeling <laughs> really. <laughs> yeah. But like, like it's, it's one of those things where I just, I felt like it was inevitable at one point, but I was excited. I was, I was really excited about it. I wasn't excited about the situation. Like the situation mm-hmm. was, I was like, oh, this is a bummer. Um, it goes down fair. Yeah. And like, like, uh, mix incredibly talented, uh, mm-hmm. great composer, great sound designer have nothing bad to say about him and it, but it was just like I, I was a little bummed that that was the situation that I was stepping in but I was glad that I could help the fans in a time where they really mm-hmm. needed something there rather than you know maybe the DLC is just another thing of the music you've already heard we can add something new the thing that was crazy was uh <laughs> before I agreed to anything they approached me and they were like hey we, you know they were really upfront hey, we understand that uh, the agreement that we're, that we're about to show you, the scope of work we're about to show you, this is pretty tough. And you don't mm-hmm. you don't have to agree to it. Like, we're just, we're showing it to you and we're half, like, I think they were like, they were halfway expecting me to be like, no, you know, like, mm-hmm. it, but then be able to say we tried. Um, and like the scope was like something like 27 or 28 days to write like 40 minutes worth of music or something like that. And I was, okay. yeah, I was, I was looking at it. Well, it was like right in the middle of the, you have to understand this was right in the middle of the pandemic. Everybody went home. They had all the stuff going on with, uh, like, like with, with, with Mick, with whatever was, was happening there. It was just like, everything was compounding. It's like, if you had a deadline that got shifted, if you had this deadline that got shifted and that was every game studio, nobody got a pass from that. The markers got pulled every or pushed every, it felt like every month for people. And like, I feel like what, as I was stepping into that, I knew that that was what was going on because that was happening with everybody. And so when they handed that to me and, uh, they were like, you know, you don't, you know, this is this, we understand that this is, this is pretty crazy looking on paper and you don't have to say, you know, yes to this by any means, Mm -hmm. we can still revisit something in the future if you wanted to. And I think they were kind of surprised a little bit whenever I was like, 
yeah, let's do it. Because <laughs> I looked at it and I was like, I feel like history has a has a has a, a moment where it can like reach out and be like, mm-hmm. you know, hey, if you do this, there's two things that can that can come out of it. Number one, nobody can fucking ever call you lazy after this. <laughs> like, oh, that's could, true. That's could true. Never, it could never happen. <laughs> Because you can just be like, yeah, hey, let me tell you about the story, you know. <laughs> uh, and number two, I feel like it would be a really good, I just felt like it would be a really cool thing to be able to try to help out a studio that I love mm-hmm. and like with a franchise that I love, with people that I love, help them out and make their deadlines at a time where they really need it. And that was a time where every game studio needed all the help they could get because mm-hmm. work from home was like, what the fuck? How do we do this? You know, how do we use the render farm from home? <laughs> like I can only imagine how those conversations went. It was a challenge and a half. And I'm just, I'm glad I took it. I'm glad I did it. Uh, was it a little tough? Yeah, of course. But I knew that going into it. And that's why I took it is I wanted to see it to myself more than anything else. And mm-hmm. can I do this? Am I cut out for this? Because this probably won't be the only time that something like this ever happens. You know, it might happen again for a game. It might happen again for a film. Sometimes deadlines get fucked up. That's just part of the business. And no, uh, very well. Yeah, uh, oh yeah. And like, I think it, I think it went okay. Like, I was like, all right, cool. If I can handle this, I can handle shit like this in the future if need be. I'm saying all this about myself. David was a huge help. David and Chad were amazing. Like David, I'd call him every day, just so that we could be like. You know, hey, how's your day going? You know, and I just kind of bitch to each other a little bit about like, you know, I can't get this idea down correctly or something like that. And Chad was just always there. He was always a phone call away with like, do you need help with like inspiration? Is there anything that I can, I can show you like in terms of like my gear that, you know, you might learn something from. He was a, he was a college education. But so was, you were supporting each other, yeah? Yeah, it was a huge support yeah. network. Like between between us three, I feel like I feel like I went through twenty twenty with with those guys, those guys, and my girlfriend Taya. Like I feel like those are the four people of the like <laughs> that I I talk to the most. But yeah, that's it was it was amazing working with uh, with Id and with Bethesda. Everybody was amazing. Like I have no bad things to say about that entire experience. Mm-hmm. It was oh, I knew what I was getting into. Number one, uh, there's no problems there. But number two, uh, everybody that was involved from the PR side on Bethesda Zenimax to uh, all the way down to the production side and producers with like Hugo and Marty, everybody. It was all good. Love those guys. I would do it. I'd do it again in a heartbeat. <laughs> Even if it was very intense, you would do it uh, right away. Once yeah. Again. Yeah. I'd, I'd, and- I'd do that all over again. It was it was fun. And I learned so much and it changed me as a, as a, as a musician, like mm-hmm. my foundations, it changed my foundations so much that I would do it again. Let's be honest, let's be completely honest. It's good to have uh, doom and eat software in your resume. <laughs> That's, oh yeah, uh, for sure. It's a big help. But at the end of the day, Freedom Mix Apartment is about mostly horror games. So uh, not only games, just, just horror. So it's obvious I need to ask you about Iron luck it's like uh I'm oh my super friend mark about <laughs> yeah best regards to mark and uh, i'm super excited about this upcoming movie based on the the iron luck because this is one of my favorite horror games ever you're working on the music to this movie how epic is that and i know you cannot tell me anything you, you i would like to know but how much can you tell me uh, uh what can we expect from this film and especially from his music I can tell you that we need to switch to the next question right now. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, no, like, so. It's great to be fine. Yeah, next question. So number one, um, I can't believe that David is having a movie made by one of his games. And I'm so proud of him. It, like, this is, it's the coolest thing ever. And these were just ideas that he had during the pandemic that he was like, I think this would be cool. And he just kind of built on it and released it. I was mm-hmm. we were on a call when he released it. And I was like, cool right on and then it just turned into this thing and i'm like jesus christ is everything you touch turned to gold you know like (laughs) um, feels like it yeah yeah yeah. it's just all from his house and yeah it's crazy but i'm super proud of david i can't believe i'm writing the music for the score of it but number three 
actually, I'd say number three is I can't believe I'm writing the music for the score for it. Number two is Mark is the nicest dude, like nicest creative that I think I've ever come in contact with. Oh, okay. See, like, like sometimes you find a another creative in your world that and you run into them that you're like, yeah, they get it. They like they get it. They understand that there's there's this language that's there, like in terms of of working together with creative that you can't really write down on paper. And like sometimes it's just there with people and it's definitely Mm. just there with Mark. And like I appreciate the living shit out of that. (laughs) He's he's great. It was awesome uh, to to be able to to work on this. I'm still currently working on it. Mm hmm. Here's a couple things I can tell you. They did have, they flew me back and forth on set to uh, actually write music while Mark was filming it. Mark wanted oh. me to be there to actually like write demos and stuff. So I'd, I'd fly down there about once every other week for two months, two or three months. Uh, maybe it was three months. Mm-hmm. And um, I would stay there for about two or three days and just write demos for it and go, take that back home and see if there was anything that we could have for it. Obviously, whenever it comes to the full edit, that's all going to change. And that's like, I'm learning that as time goes on. Like, hey, all these demos you made, not going to use some of them, you know? Like, <laughs> um, but uh, it's coming together wonderfully. And I'm, mm-hmm. I'm very, very, very excited like to see people's reactions for this. But I think I'm more excited every time that we start getting something where it's like, yeah, that's, that's how that's supposed to be. Or I get to see like new shots. I'm like, Oh God, mm-hmm. I think people love this thing. But yeah, I, I can't go into too much detail. I um, know. I I completely understand. I think soon you'll, you'll possibly get something else coming down the pipe. Um, not sure when, mm-hmm. but I think soon you'll get, you'll get something else that'll be like, you know, a little bit more of a venture into that world. But it's it's been a wonderful experience, and I hope I get to work with Mark again. He seems like he wants to continue to work with me after this. We'll see. Okay. Like I, I I really I really like that that I just like the vibe. I like the creative vibe. I don't know how else to explain it. Sounds promising. And of course, I'm not going to dig too deep here because I understand you can't uh, tell <laughs> me too much. But let me just ask you how you feel in this role because I guess this won't be a adrenaline metal music. Probably will be something more ambient more horrorish thing so how do you feel switching to something like that yeah it'd be fucking weird if i just showed up and was like you know <laughs> hey play blood swamps during iron blood <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> that wouldn't work i mean that would be original yeah but <laughs> maybe yeah. that would, wouldn't suit here i think i can give give this out actually um mm-hmm. i don't think this is revealing anything too much so one of the inspirations for the soundtrack that me and mark bounced a lot of ideas on back and forth me mark and david really actually Mm -hmm. was you know the iron lungs a rusted piece of shit weird looking submarine that it's like what the fuck is this Mm -hmm. and i thought what if we can make like sounds from large pieces of vibrating metal and actually pitch them around and and make something with that and that's all main the soundscape with it and i started writing demos and like i think mark's exact exact reaction was holy shit let's just keep it like that like let's just do that and i was like oh okay you know <laughs> so that's that's about as far as i can go with that but it's it's very conceptual i've i've taken a lot of this to heart and i want to make sure that it's something special i mean for mark of course but also you know me and david have been in the trenches for forever it feels like now and i want to make sure that his first film adaptation gets some really good treatment with that. I'm sure it will because it, uh, the project sounds amazing and I cannot wait to watch the movie, of course, but also hear yeah. uh, amazing soundtrack to it. Uh, so we were in the past, we were in the present, so let's jump in uh, for a moment to the future. And I have that a question, a small play you can, you can say for you. Let's say you can compose uh, music to whatever game you want. I mean, whatever genre, or setting you can imagine what game would it be can i pick more than one okay but only two okay two <laughs> all right two uh the two i would go with the hitman franchise oh i didn't expect that but it's cool the hitman franchise is a really cool just 
puzzle game just masked mm-hmm. as like an assassination game. I really enjoy the composer that they've had with the last three games that they made, this big trilogy. Mm-hmm. I think it's great direction. At first, I, I wasn't a fan, and I was kind of vocal about it. I was like, I was that guy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, but, I, I, you know, I, I miss uh, Jesper Kidd from the originals oh. because he, he made it he made it feel so, like, evil and, like, sinister. But the more I play, like, the new ones, the more I'm like, no, this is the right, like, this is the perfect take for, like, modern Hitman. This is This is good. This is fine. Like, there's a little bit of humor there. That's fine. You are picking up bananas and throwing them at people's heads and stuff like that. That's that's cool. But I would I would love to have a chance to maybe um, see if I could put my own spin on a Hitman game and maybe revisit some stuff from Jisper Kid while also um, respecting what's been brought forward with the franchise now. And I'm sorry, mm. I feel like an asshole. I don't know the the modern composer's name. Oh, that's gonna make me look so bad. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't remember too. Oh. But uh, don't worry, we can after after this, uh, I can pack this interview and send it to the developers uh, responsible <laughs> Hitman. Maybe he, they would say, "Whoa, Edge, who should want wants to work with us? Why, why not?" Or they'll just, or they'll be like, they'll be like, he doesn't, he doesn't even fucking know who our composer is. That's for him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. If you want to send it to him, go for it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'd, I'd love to work on Hitman. Like that's that's another one that's one of my favorite titles going all the way back to you know my childhood like i can just remember mm-hmm. installing that and being like what is this you know like it was that was some really groundbreaking stuff but the other one is weird here's another weird one okay this is just kind of your thing so go this, this kind of shows that i might be a psychopath is uh like I'd, I'd love to like make some stuff for minecraft I like oh. that chill, like really chill ambient kind of stuff. How did we get from Hitman to Minecraft? That's amazing. <laughs> That's what I mean. A little bit. Like this guy's a <laughs> psychopath. It's like, because <laughs> <laughs> you got to have the two extremes. You got to have like, yeah, 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 yeah. You got to have that, and then you got to have chill. So it's like, oh my god, murder, and then we're gonna <laughs> make you know sandcastles or whatever, you know. Or just dig until we hit, you know, bedrock. <laughs> but I, I like I like how different those are and, and like the feelings that they invoke whenever I'm playing them. I always notice it, especially Minecraft. Like whenever if I just want to chill out and I'm done with City Skylines for a while, it's I'm gonna boot up Minecraft and like every time I'm listening to that music, I'm like, God, this is so perfect. Like I wanna just write music for this. My save zone, yeah. Yeah, yeah, just chill and like I don't have to worry about shit. And maybe I take a gummy before I play. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you know, you know what's crazy? I also have a one game that is my safe zone. That uh, whenever I boot it up, it's like my special place, and I'm not stressed uh, at all. It's Doom, but the one from 1993. I don't know why, because I know it's still a very action-packed game, but yeah. I kind of feel like this, uh, you know, calm garden when I'm playing Doom. I, yeah. I don't know why. I don't understand that. It's it's it's, it's the familiarity. It's it's the association guess, yeah. with portion of. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm being your psychologist right now. It's, it's the associ- <laughs> association with part of your childhood. You know, like like. There wasn't a whole lot to worry about then. You, you got to worry about paying bills. You got to worry about all this other shit these days. And like, you know, like the world's a crazy place. Whereas back then it was wake up, go to school, maybe play Doom, you know, hang out with your friends. It's about it. I guess you're, I guess you're right here. I guess, yeah. So uh, I have one more play for you at the end because I have one more question that every every guest in the Freedom is Apartment needs to answer. Let's imagine the situation that someone is sending you on a deserted island for a for a year, but you can take free games with you. And uh, let's say that you have electricity and consoles there. I know it's a very unreal situation, but hypothetically, this is the right expression. Hypothetically, what free games would you choose? This is always the most uh, difficult question in Free Demix apartment. Yeah, that's that's tough. I'm gonna say. Doom, like the '93. It's a good one. Good one. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> like I love, I love the newer games. I do, but like, there's just something special about the original, which is why the continuation of the IP is a thing. You know, I'm gonna say Doom, Minecraft, 
I don't know. Like it's it's a, that's a great one to just like. I mean, I mean, it's, it's it's a great game to spend your time on the desert island. You can even bring bring only Minecraft, and you can spend the whole year there. So yeah, exactly. It's a, good, it's a good choice. Do I get to have internet? Let's say yes. Okay. So those two check the boxes for single player. Mm-hmm. If we were gonna do one that was multiplayer, I'd still need to be hooked up with my buddies at New Blood, so I'd need to bring Hunt Showdown as well. Ah, uh, okay, that's a, that's a good one as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah You're yeah. playing a lot. Oh my god, so much. I've I've played that since <laughs> the day it launched in early access. I think I have somewhere north of like probably two thousand hours in that. Mm-hmm. There's a, like, and I got almost all of New Blood hooked onto that. Where you know, if somebody's having a shit day developing their game and they're like i need to come back to mm-hmm. this you know I, I i can't do this right now they'll just ping a chat that we all have now because i've gotten everybody into this game we're like who wants to play you know <laughs> i mean i need to say these are amazing choices and uh, i think you would be even happy if someone would close you on that island for a year with all those games although i thought you would choose city skylines and the funny thing is i need to say it uh, this is the fifth episode of freedom is apartment i'm recording uh, now and to, you would be the third person that would choose City Skylines to uh, the island. Already two people uh, choose it, but no, you said no. Nah, <laughs> thank, thankfully, you're not the third one. We'll see. Like I, I, that was like the toss up for me between Minecraft and City Skylines, and I'm like, well, yeah. you know, you could sit there with City Skylines and do that, but it's like, you know, do I have do I have my gummies on the island? Like. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, still, so. but still, still very good choices, and Andrew. These were all questions I had to you. It was amazing to speak with you about your work, about your past, about your experience, and still would like to ask you more and more questions, but I need to keep it not too long, those, those conversations. So maybe part two, one day after you, you will be able to tell me more about Iron Lang. What, what would you say? Yeah, I'd love to. This is, this is great. This is, this is awesome. Um, yeah, thanks for having me. This, is, this has been great. Yeah, hopefully whenever Iron Lang ships, we can talk again. Okay, keep- I keep fingers crossed for it. And once again, thank you very much, Andrew. Thank you.